Well, hey guys, welcome back to Linda's Pantry. And today I've got a little bit of a different video for you. It includes food for sure, because I'm trying to grow as much of my own food as we possibly can. I always have, but I think the emphasis is more on it by next year. I really want to grow all my produce, if at all possible. But <clears throat> I want to show you my worm composting bin that I put in ground in a bed that really didn't have a lot of activity going on. And it's grown so-so. I mean, I fertilize it and do all the amendments the same, but it didn't have a lot of worms. And I really wanted to bring that soil up to par. So I put an in-ground composting bucket in there and about a month and a half ago. So now I'm going to show you what's going on in there because it's time to fill it up. And I've got a bunch of watermelon rinds I'm going to be putting in later, but I use natural paper towels, cardboard with no plastic or color on it. Um, that's usually the paper products. Any of the dried leaves and stuff that we get from the garden and food scraps. Okay, with no citrus, no meat, no none of that. I'm not doing that. But drill holes in your bucket on the bottom and around the sides, big enough for worms to get through. So uh, it was about a half an inch. Um, Anyways, I'm going to pull it out and show you what's in there. And we're going to use what's in there because the worm castings and the compost are fantastic. But first, we've got to go and prune the crookneck squash. And I'm going to show you how because it's easy and um, it opens up the canopy so the pollinators can come in. And we're getting now we're getting lots of pollinating. But I've had to prune this thing now. There's three plants in there. I've had to prune them about twice a week. So wait till you see it. Okay, so literally we're gonna get in here and just start pruning. I don't know how well I'm gonna be able to let you see, but it's anything below that fruit is fine. Get it off of there. Oh, I just cut a flower, dang it. It's okay. Um, and I, I pruned on this so many times already. It just keeps going and going and going and I want to clear off where I can get in that um, bucket but literally just get a pair of scissors you're not going to hurt this plant get a pair of scissors and get in there like I said anything below where you've got root growing can be pulled out of there and it allows light in here it allows the bees to see where they're going and in the morning the bees are so busy they're covered in pollen you can't even see their coloring because it's so full of pollen so <clears throat> and these leaves are prickly and you know unpleasant so enjoy the process it's it's going to be wonderful to have all this food and to be able to see in here and then I'll have to do this again in about a week um, maybe less it's actually been about twice a week but I think we're gonna get to a point where we could probably get away with once a week I'm hoping and you want to leave some because you need the shade but I see some leaves in here that I don't think look as healthy so I want to get those out of there like these two they don't look that spiffy. Anything that doesn't look right, prune it out. Get it out of there. So you're opening it up without taking all the shade away. And these are their solar panels, so you don't want to take all of it away. But uh, you can take a big majority of it. And then I just compost the leaves. So there we go. I'm getting in here and you'll see my uh, what I do or what it looks like afterwards as soon as I'm done. Whoops. Okay, so I've got it all cleaned up. I hope you can see that. Now you can see inside. The sun can get in there. The bees can get to the flowers. And within the week, that will be right back to where it was. But we can also get into this bucket that's down here. So I might stake that over a bit. One more of these leaves is coming out. Uh, okay, there we go. 
I got a pile for the compost. So, um, let's get in here and I'll show you up close. Okay, so like I said, this is so rich and I'm just going to be very careful because I've got, can you see the worms moving in there? I don't want to hurt them. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. That is, look at that life. And I might just go ahead, I was going to pull it out, but I think I might go ahead. I'm turning it pretty good. I just want to turn it and let the worms take over. There's baby worms. It doesn't smell at all. It's awesome. Turning your kitchen scraps into compost. That's how you do it. Get holes in the bucket. The holes start about three inches from the top. Look at the little baby worms in there. Can you see them? Those are little babies. Probably red wrigglers. They are the best for composting and reproducing. So they can come in and out of that bin, drag their um, all that fertile um, castings and help this whole bed. So that's what I'm doing. Now I'm going to refill it with some kitchen scraps and I'll be okay, back. So oops, I cut my watermelon up and I'm taking out some dry and some fresh uh, watermelon rinds. And you want to cut it up kind of small. It's a small, if I was throwing it in a big compost heap, it'd be different. But let's go see. So yes, I, as I said, if you were putting it in a compost heap, like I will be doing very soon, I'm going to have my, my dream compost heap. Um, but until then, I'm going to do it this way. And look, those leaves are already wilting. It already looks better, so much better. And we're going to get this dry stuff in here. If this was anaerobic, it would smell bad. It would smell like sewage. It is not at all, but you can see where the melon broke down. That's from melon. All those seeds are from melons. So you don't want it too wet and we just water the plants around it. Um, but you, you want moisture in there, obviously. So those worms can do their thing. And we're going to go ahead and get the melons. And this is uh, some of the dry roots and stuff that came off of my um, garlic. So those are going to get broke down right along with the rest of it. All right. So if this gave you an idea to go ahead and do an in-ground composting, then this just showed you how easy it is to make your own compost from your kitchen waste. And you could have, if you've got a series of raised beds like I do here, you can have one in each bin or bed and literally fertilize your bed while you're growing and you're getting all those worm castings. You're keeping the live soil alive. You're creating an environment for healthy, rich soil and healthy, rich plants. So I do hope that this inspires you. I hope that uh, you'll leave me a comment. And if you like this sort of comment or content, I do hope that you'll give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And if you subscribe, that's fantastic. I can't wait to see you next time for another delicious recipe, quite possibly using Crookneck squash because there's a couple that are almost ready and it's one of my favorites to make a I made a cheese and cracker casserole my uh, my whole adult life and I called it that so my kids would eat it so if you want to see that recipe when they're ready I will share it okay bye for now <laughs> So I hope if you like this sort of content, you'll leave me a comment and let me know what you like the most and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you back. And now look how pretty it is all trimmed up.